I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again, and uh, we're foregoing the bells and whistles of the usual video presentation that we do each week here uh, because of the uh, tragedy up in Connecticut. It's such a, a hot-button issue right now. It's something that everybody's talking about, and we wanted to get something out there uh, and join that discussion and lead it a little bit as quickly as we could without taking the time to do all of those bells and whistles and editing and whatnot. So. Uh, this is going to be audio only today, but we definitely did want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, first of all, it, is, it go, goes without saying, I would think, that this is an unspeakable and horrific tragedy. Uh, it is impossible for those of us who are rational human beings, uh, who have a concept of right and wrong, to truly understand the motivations of, of this shooter and why they did what they did. And I'm sure we'll be trying to answer those questions over the next few weeks, but Really, I suspect that we will not come up with an explanation that would make sense to any of us. It's just one of those things. But uh, I think the focus of everybody right now, and it happened very quickly on social media, very quickly on the Internet and, and so forth, the focus very quickly was to determine what can be done to prevent things like this in the future. And don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing anyone who went right out and politicized this and pushed their viewpoint right away because I think that's part of how human beings handle things when we see a tragedy like this or when we see something that's difficult for us to explain that we know is wrong we we instantly try to uh, give our take on it and, and to, to talk it through and discuss it so I don't begrudge anybody for putting their opinion out there as quickly as they did but I think we all understood that the second you heard about this you were able to go on Facebook Twitter and whatever and you would see people's opinions all over the fruited plain uh, no surprise there some of the first people you saw on, on Twitter and so forth were the gun control advocates starting to spout off on uh, why they think this is another indication of why we need tighter gun control laws or why guns need to be banned outright. And again, I, I'm not criticizing them for taking to the Twitterverse and the Facebooks and so forth, but I am criticizing their opinion, I suppose, as I always would. My answer to them would very simply be that uh, banning guns or making gun laws tougher would not keep guns off the streets. It would not keep them out of the hands of this lunatic any more than laws that ban drugs have kept drugs off the streets. The bottom line is that when there is a demand for something, someone somewhere will always supply it, whether legally or whether through a black market. So banning guns, while I'm sure most of the people who take that viewpoint uh, do so out of a good place in their heart, not necessarily the politicians, but I'm talking about the individual rank and file people and, and voters and so forth that believe in that stuff, uh, even though I disagree with them, I know that most of them are trying to do the right thing. They have the best of intentions. Unfortunately, good intentions don't always lead to good legislation. They usually do not in terms of how uh, things end up happening. So really the idea that we ban guns and, and this type of thing goes away doesn't make sense to me uh, whatsoever. And I say that as respectfully as I can in, in this type of situation, in this type of environment. The bottom line is that you know, we've had guns readily available in our society since day one. And yet these type of horrific and irrational mass shootings, mass killings, they seem to have spiked within recent history, within the last few decades. It's not really something we've dealt with from the founding of our society. Oh, I'm sure individual things happened here and there, but never with the frequency and with the gravity that they are happening today. So the guns really can't be the cause of this spike if the guns have been there all along. And I go back and think to my own time growing up in school. Uh, when I was in high school, I, I went to high school in, in what you call a rural area, rural part of the state of Missouri. And it was not uncommon at all for students to drive to school with a gun in their car. I mean, if, if you think back to the stereotype of the pickup truck and the gun racks, that's what I grew up around. So. You could go into the parking lot of our school and see any number of, of pickups with gun racks in them with guns in the gun rack. Nobody thought anything of it. Other cars would have guns in them. And, you know, it wasn't 
wasn't anything at all for a student to, to go hunting before he came to school in the morning or to go hunting after he left school for, in the afternoon. You know, no one thought anything of it. We never had any problems. There was not an issue. Others, on the other hand, have taken a position that this type of tragedy indicates a need for more mental health care in America or more of a focus on mental health care. And, well, I disagree with that idea as well, and I'll explain why momentarily. While I disagree with that, I at least applaud the people who are uh, taking that position because at least those people are starting to focus their attention on the actions of the individual perpetrators as opposed to focusing on an inanimate object such as a gun. I think that while I, I disagree with where they're, they're ending up, I would say that at least they are starting to focus on the individual themselves, and that is largely a, a positive development in how we're having these discussions in this country. So I think there might be some value to at least engaging those people. Uh, I think they're at least on the right track, even if they're getting to the wrong point. In my estimation, I have not seen any indication that we have significantly more mentally disturbed people or more people suffering from mental illness today in America than we've had at any point in the past. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure more people are diagnosed with mental health issues today because we have more knowledge in that field and more thing, more type of diseases have been identified and so forth. And there's less of a stigma for getting mental health and, and things like that than there used to be. So I'm sure more people get diagnosed. I'm sure there's far more of an awareness of it. But I don't think we had fewer mentally disturbed people in the old days. Just they more often than not fell through the cracks. I don't see any indication that the total number of mentally disturbed people, whether diagnosed or not, has spiked alongside this spike in violent mass murder incidents. Therefore, I have a tough time seeing a lack of mental health focus being a cause for this type of problem either, just as I don't believe the guns are the, the problem. In fact, I even had one Facebook follower who uh, came right out and tried to use this tragedy as an excuse to push further for the idea of universal health care, saying that this was an indication that we needed universal health care. But there again, we've never had universal health care in this nation before, and we did not have these type of incidents in such number in the past. So therefore, lack of universal health care is not a cause for this type of tragedy either, nor is it a solution. So what I'm getting at here is that if guns do not explain this spike in these incidents, if mental health issues do not explain this spike in these incidents, then what does explain it? Well, I think the answer is pretty clear, although I will freely admit that it will piss some people off. And I'm not coming out here on that shields of this tragedy trying to upset anybody, but the truth is the truth. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what I, what I believe it is. I believe the problem that we're seeing, the, the reason we have more of these issues now than we've had in the past, is because of the steady decline in morality and values that America has undergone over the last several decades. The same crisis of character that I spoke of immediately after the election is also a cause for this. If you recall, the day after the election, I put out a, a piece, I put out a show in which I indicated that I thought the Obama election in a second term was an indication that younger people and a lot of Americans do not truly understand right from wrong, that it was a crisis of character in this country. And I think these type of shootings are another indication of that. I'm not equating them, don't get me wrong. I'm in no way saying that electing Barack Obama is equal to shooting up kids in a school, not anything from it, but I am saying that they're all branches from the same tree. You know, we have raised, as a society, we have raised multiple generations of children in what has amounted to a moral vacuum. We've taught them moral relativism. We've taught them that everything must be considered, and we've ushered them away from solid and uncompromising principles of right and wrong. And yes, we have also ushered them away from any sort of religious influence in schools or society. We've effectively taught them, be, be as well-meaning as we might have been, we, we've effectively taught them that morality, religion are sort of private things, and, and each individual has their own definitions of them, and there are not black and white areas of right and wrong, that everything's just sort of a gray area. But when right and wrong are variable in society, and what's right and wrong or whatever the individual chooses for them to be, when there is no longer a consensus in society about what is right and what is wrong, then is it any wonder that people like this shooter will emerge from such a chaotic societal upbringing? It is clear 
that fewer and fewer young people truly understand the basic fundamentals of right versus wrong. We've seen it in that in, in innumerable areas in life. We've seen it in that bus bullying incident that took place earlier in the year when you had that older bus monitor who was on a bus and the kids just tormented her and caught it on video. We see the general lack of respect for authority that kids have today. We saw that Occupy Wall Street movement where they were defecating on police cars. We see young people voting for Barack Obama because they feel that they are owed health care and free stuff without earning it. And yes, we've now seen younger people charge into schools and shoot up kids. The same moral parameters that our parents and grandparents instilled in us have escaped this generation, clearly. And what people don't like to talk about, what they don't like to acknowledge, is that the human mind, when left to its own devices, is capable of justifying and rationalizing absolutely anything to itself that it wants and absolutely any action that it wants to take. Human beings are both amazing and scary in that regard. Empathy and concepts like right and wrong do not come naturally to us as human beings. They are not instinctive. Instead, that is the role that morality and, yes, religion serve in the upbringing of human beings. But when you cut out morality and religion out of the equation, you are left with a society that we live in today. You are left with people that have grown up in a moral vacuum and do not know right from wrong and can justify to themselves in whatever twisted way that going into a school and shooting up school children is right and just. Now, you and I can't understand that. But this guy evidently could. You're left with tragedies like what we have in Connecticut. This is where we have to focus our attention if we are to make a dent in these type of problems. We must focus our attention on the overall moral decay of our society. We must focus our attention on teaching right and wrong to our children, not only within our own homes, where it's critical, of course, that we do that, but also in our churches, also in our schools, also in our society as a whole. Our children no longer grow up with that consistency of right and wrong that you and I had. When, when we were growing up, and I'm in my late 30s to give you a uh, time frame here, when we were growing up, the right and wrong you learned at home was consistent with the right and wrong you learned at school, was consistent with the right and wrong you learned at church. There were not variables. It was the same rules that applied every place, but these poor kids today, they don't know right, right from wrong because they get so many different definitions competing with each other of what is right and what is wrong. So they just determine it for themselves, and you see what happens. Well, I'm sorry to end on a down note, but this is certainly a downer of a situation, and that doesn't even put it in the proper context. I hope that with our next show, we can do something a little bit more light and go back to talking about politics as usual, I suppose. But our thoughts are certainly with everybody out there in Connecticut. And I think it is time that we had a sobering discussion in this country about our lack of moral compass. I thoroughly believe that things like Connecticut, things like the election of Barack Obama, while certainly not equal in, in scope, are indications that these younger folks have completely lost their way, and many of them are absolutely amoral. That's it for this time. This is America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook. We'll see you next time out. <laughs>